You're watching Tornado Facts with Beanrock124, Season 3, Episode 13, or Episode 53. My name is Nathan, and I love talking about tornadoes. <sighs> Since I'm now lead meteorologist of my school's newspaper, I guess I can add this to the list of weather stuff I do for that. But, eh, I don't know. Today, I am talking about the Evansville, Indiana tornado outbreak of November 2005. It was a destructive tornado outbreak of nine tornadoes that struck the Mississippi River Valley and the Midwest during the uh, overnight hours of November 5th and 6th of 2005. The worst event was an F3 tornado pictured here that was uh, that formed early in the morning on November 6th outside of Evansville, Indiana. It was the first of several tornado events that November. The the tornado resulted in 24 deaths um, across the region, making it the deadliest, most destructive November tornado in Indiana's history. <clears throat> so here's meteor meteorological synopsis, and also this is the only known photo of this tornado, unlike Plainfield, where no tornado photos exist. Um, the system formed on a warm front that tracked across the Midwest and stretched from the northern Great Lakes to Tennessee. The front was enhanced by a strong jet stream and warm, humid air ahead of it, allowing thunderstorms to develop. A severe thunderstorm watch was issued for the region just west of Evansville as the main threat appeared to be straight line winds. The system had formed into a squall line, but at around 1.30 a.m. Central Time, the squall line broke up in the Ohio, uh, Ohio River Valley area as the low-level jet, uh, low jet, or LLJ, intensified, allowing embedded tornadoes to form rapidly out of newly formed supercells. They were fairly isolated, only nine confirmed... Um, only nine were confirmed, but three significant tornadoes formed for two simultaneous supercells in southern Indiana and western Kentucky, one of them being the Evansville tornado. So here are the tornadoes <clears throat> across November 5th and 6th. None unrated, 1F0, 2F, 2F1s, 4F2s, 2F3s, nine total tornadoes, and here are the tornadoes. As I said, it was um, formed early on November 6th, 24 dead, 238 injured, and at around 1.50 a.m. Central Time, um, an F3 tornado touched down two miles north northwest, of, bleh, north northwest of Smith Mills in Henderson County, Kentucky. The tornado moved northeast, snapping numerous trees, destroying a farmhouse, and uh, throwing a pickup truck into a field. Uh, the tornado then crossed the Ohio River and moved across the rural peninsula of Van Vanderburg County, Indiana. Um, few structures were impacted in this rural area, though a two-story house built in 1875 uh, sustained major roof damage, and tree branches were embedded into the walls of the house. Jeez. Uh, one, one farm equipment shed was demolished, and another sustained major damage. A 10,000-pound truck was flipped over, and heavy farm equipment was moved several feet. Aerial surveys revealed distinct spiral-shaped scour marks in farm fields in this area. A uh, perfect example of what those could be is what happened during the Mayfield tornado. And here's what, um, tornado crossed here. This is where it was talking about right here. And then across back into Kentucky for a little bit. And then south sides of Evansville, far south sides. Um, the tornado crossed the Ohio River a third time. Uh, perfect. Uh, into a small portion of Kentucky situated on the north bank of the river. Almost immediately after the crossing the river, the tornado tore through the, wow, what is, what, what's that term? Where has, where the letters are the same? That, I've never seen it this long before. Uh, I almost said hyperbole, no. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, Ellis Park Horse Racing Facility was hit by the tornado. There was extensive damage to grandstands and housing facilities for jockeys. A, huge, a few ho race horses were killed there. The tornado then re-entered Indiana and moved across the southern fringes of Evansville. Here, the tornado ripped directly through the East Millbrook Mobile Home Park, or the East East Brook Mobile Home Park, obliterating numerous mobile homes and killing 20. Or, um, so yeah, perfect example of why you should not be in a mobile home. Episode number 77. Out of about 350 mobile homes in the park, 100 were destroyed and another 125 were damaged. The coroner reported that most of the victims were probably killed instantly, many by spine and skull fractures. Oh, I should have read that before. Several bodies were carried almost 200 yards. I should have read that before, too. The tornado then crossed into Warwick County at the Angels Mound State Historic Site. Several permanent homes were destroyed in this area, although, or, along with many others on the north side of, New, uh, of Newburgh. Uh, past Newburgh, the tornado reached its peak intensity of high-end F3 as it tore through an industrial park near Paradise. Further northeast, the tornado passed through the south 
uh, passed just south of Boonville and caused a fatality in a mobile home. What in the world? Uh, the tornado then directly tore through a uh, small community of Dagona Spring, Dagonia Springs, tossing vehicles and destroying many homes. Some of the homes in the community were leveled and three people were killed in the mobile home. So basically everybody that was killed in this tornado was killed in a mobile home. Perfect example to why you should not be in a mobile home. Some of the homes in the community were leveled and three, I read that, um, a woman who was also eight months pregnant was killed as well. The tornado began to rapidly weaken as it passed just south of Tennyson and then dissipated as it crossed into Spencer County. Uh, overall, the tornado damaged or destroyed 500 buildings, killed 24 people, all in mobile homes, and injured 238 people. So here's the path again. I started here and then uh, ended near Gentryville right there. So, tornado warnings were in effect at the time and issued on average about 30 minutes before the tornado hit. But few people were alerted as many were asleep as the tornado hit in overnight hours. Uh, the local NOAA weather radio transmitter was experiencing technical difficulties at the time, causing some weather radios to not sound an alarm. And the aftermath. The community's response to the tornado garnered national praise. Brad Gare, a cor uh, cor coordinating officer for the FEMA, noted, I don't think I've ever seen a community of people come out so quickly to help each other. It's almost like the Oklahoma standard. All communities came to get all communities come together after a disaster, but this one's uh, exceptional. Just having a telethon that that quickly was amazing, said Gare. Then to raise that kind of money, it's unusual. And on October uh, August 12, I don't know where I get October from. August 12, 2006, a granite memorial was um, built at East Brook Mobile Home Park, along with a new playground dedicated to the children lost in the tornado. It was part of a new campaign launched by two parents that lost children in the tornado. In addition, Rep uh, Representative Phil Hoy uh, introduced a bill called CJ's Law, which mandates that manufacturers of mobile homes install an operating weather radio with, separate, with a separate power outlet in order to, in order to alert residents. Um, it was named after victim CJ Martin, who was only two years old when he was killed by the tornado. Uh, I've never heard of this. That's actually that's actually a really good. I, I'm surprised it's uh, you you haven't heard anything more about it. Uh, Vanderburg County also passed legislation toughening safety standards for their 3,100 mobile homes, requiring them to be more securely anchored with additional straps and braces to try and prevent another tornado disaster. Ellis Park was rebuilt and opened on uh, June 1, 2006, for training, and the first wait races were um, held just a little more than a month later. Local TV station WEHT began a campaign after the, after the tornado to provide weather radios for tornado victims for free and uh, to all for a discounted price. Uh, even WEHT competitors have now, post, have now posted a how-to program or how to program a weather radio on their websites. This program has since spread to many different areas of the country. It's actually a good thing. I have one. Even though I have like a million weather apps on my phone, but who cares? Habitat for Humanity Evansville chapter uh, launched a construction of Operation Home Again. Uh, construction of Operation Home Again, the New Haven subdivision, which are new homes dedicated to survivors of the tornado at Green River Road and Ficas Road. The subdivision has 55 homes and a playground. There are four streets in the subdivision, Inspiration Street, Healing Street, Promise Street, and Belief Street. And they love. <clears throat> they have not been hit by a tornado since, so obviously tornadoes are not scared of this town because of what they've done. But with that, that is this edition of Nathan's Weather Show number. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have not done this Nathan's Weather Show crap in a while. This is what happens when I record all the videos. Uh, before, like way before they're all record, uh, they're all supposed to be published, but. Yeah, I haven't done a recording of this in a month. So with that, that is Tornado Facts of Being Two Four Season 3, Episode 13, or Episode 53. My name is Nathan, and with that, goodbye.